Hey everyone, you're with Tesla Tom, and thanks so much for joining me today on my YouTube channel where I discuss Tesla, electric vehicles, and renewable energy. If this is your first time to my channel, then hello and welcome. Take a moment to hit that red subscribe button, that way you stay informed of any new content, and it also helps my channel to grow as well. Today we're going to compare all the electric vehicle charging plants in New South Wales, Australia. We're going to do that and much more right after this. Hey everyone, welcome back, and as I said, we are comparing all the electric vehicle charging plans currently available in New South Wales, Australia as of July 2021. I'll try and do an update of these EV charging plans every three months, basically whenever I get a power bill. Alright, so those of you who have been following me will know that I've got two electric vehicles, a Tesla Model 3 and a Tesla Model S. We live in Sydney, Australia with a family of four. We've also got a heat pump hot water system as well as a swimming pool running a pool pump 12 months of the year. So even though I don't have any exact data on how much electricity my Teslas have been using, we can actually use the odometer of both cars to work out a fairly close approximation of how much electricity both cars have been using. So looking at this first slide here, the Tesla Model S 70D has racked up 93,796 kilometers. I've subtracted 8,000 kilometers from this number because that's when I bought this car secondhand six months uh, into its life. So 85,796 kilometers. Divide that by 1,710 days, which is about five years of ownership so far. That works out to be 50 kilometers per day. The efficiency of my car, the way I drive, is five kilometers per kilowatt hour. So that equates to 10 kilowatt hours per day, plus phantom loss of one kilowatt hour per day. What is phantom loss? Well, it's basically the background electricity that a Tesla uses to maintain its battery management system as well as keeping the car conditioned for daily use. The Tesla Model 3 dual motor performance is now at 28,837 kilometers. Divide that by 660 days of ownership so far, which is just under two years. 44 kilometers per day, six kilometers per kilowatt hour. That's the efficiency of the Model 3 the way we drive. That works out to be 7.3 kilowatt hours per day and then adding phantom losses of one kilowatt hour per day, adding that all up in one year, it's 10 plus one plus 7.3 plus one equals 19.3 kilowatt hours times 365 days. That works out to be about 7,000 kilowatt hours in a calendar year that both cars use in electricity for our daily needs. All right, so moving on to the next slide, many of you who've been following my channel will know that I've been very lucky to be on a $1 per day AGL EV plan, which is unfortunately no longer available as of late August. So that's why I'm now researching electric vehicle plans to move on to. So on my current AGL plan, I'm on a time of use plan. So peak is 2 to 8 p.m. at 59 cents per kilowatt hour, shoulder 25 cents per kilowatt hour, off peak, which is between 10 p.m. and 7 a.m. every morning at 16 cents per kilowatt hour. And the daily supply charge is $1 per day, basically. And of course, this EV plan was at $1 per day. And the solar feed-in tariff for this plan was $0.07 cents per kilowatt hour. So in the last four bills, the last 12 months, I've paid $709.32. I should point out, too, that the old EV plan had a 22% discount if you paid the bill on time. So in effect, it was actually a very good deal for me over the last five years. In its place, AGL has offered me this new AGL electric vehicle plan. In summary, there are cheaper time of use tariffs, as you can see, 46 versus 59 for peak, 19 versus 25 cents for shoulder, off peak 13 versus 16 cents, and the daily supply charge is much lower at 81 cents as opposed to a dollar a day. Now put here for EV usage 13 cents per kilowatt hour, which is the same as off peak. There's no specific EV usage time, but of course you would charge your car if you're on this plan at the off peak rates being the cheapest time of day. And the solar feed in tariff remains the same at 7 cents. What's also different about the new AGL EV plan is that you get $60 off your bill every quarter. So $240 off per year for EV usage. The other thing too now is that there is no 22% pay on time discount. However, the cheaper tariffs do make up for that lack of discount. So if you were to plug in the same usage over the last 12 months into this new AGL EV plan, it works out to be $1,063.74. Obviously more expensive than this magnificent EV plan that I was on previously. 
$300 or more per year for my situation. And by the way, you do need to have an electric vehicle to qualify for these EV plans. But I guess the question remains, are EV plans the best on the market? What happens if you plug in these figures into one of AGL's standard plans? So let's do that right now. I've got here the AGL Solar Savers plan, which obviously, given the name, there's actually a very good solar feed-in tariff of 17 cents per kilowatt hour. All their other tariffs in their time of use version for the solar savers plan is a little bit higher than the EV plan. So 54 cents versus 46 cents for peak periods, 23 cents versus 19 cents for shoulder, 15 cents versus uh, 13 cents for off-peak, 95 cents uh, per day versus 81 cents per day for the daily supply charge. And again, I've used the off-peak pricing uh, for the EV usage period, given that it's the cheapest time of day to charge the car. And the solar feeding tariff is 17 cents per kilowatt hour. So if you add up all the costs for the same period of time as last year for my four bills, it comes to $1,177.58. So there you are, the uh, solar savers plan is actually still more expensive than the EV plan, despite the solar feeding tariff being higher. But of course, I think that difference is because you get $240 off your bill uh, per year with the EV plan. All right, so let's have a look at PowerShop, which also offers a specific EV plan. And by the way, at this point, I just want to say I've got no financial affiliation with any of these power companies. I'm just doing my own research with no endorsement for any particular company. So let's have a look at the PowerShop time of use EV plan. By the way, all the different time of use periods, peak, shoulder, and off-peak are all the same across all the power companies I have researched for this video. So the peak charge for PowerShop is $0.36, cents, which is far cheaper than AGL. 17 cents for shoulder, which is again cheaper than AGL. Off peak of 13 cents, which is cheaper than the AGL solar savers and on par with the AGL EV plan. Daily supply charge is more expensive at $1.10 per day versus 95 cents for solar savers and 81 cents for the AGL EV plan. Now the EV usage tariff, and this is what makes all the difference. They are offering 6.6 .6 cents per kilowatt hour between the hours of midnight and 4 a.m. every weekday. So we're talking Monday morning, Tuesday morning, Wednesday morning, Thursday morning, and Friday morning, which I guess works out well for uh, the working week. And the solar feed-in tariff is uh, quite pathetic, 5 cents per kilowatt hour. But I think this EV tariff is 6.6 .6 cents per kilowatt hour uh, makes up for more than this low solar feed-in tariff. So if you were to use the same numbers as for my last four power bills, then you get a price of $1,016.13, which is still cheaper than the replacement AGL EV plan. So it looks like PowerShop is the cheapest plan so far, but I want to do one more comparison, and that is Overdrive, one of the new players to the Australian market. They've got this bill smoothing plan where you pay basically the same figure all year and they do adjust it up and down according to how much you use. So even though it's marketed as the same rate all year, they do adjust your direct debit up and down depending on how much you use. So they're offering $90 per month to start with, but obviously if you use more than that, then your direct debit usage will go up. But conversely, if it's less than $90 per month over time, they do decrease that as well. And as part of their EV plan, they're offering five cents off their off-peak rate between the hours of midnight and 5 a.m. every day. And so let's go through that right now. So peak is 39 cents per kilowatt hour, just slightly more expensive than PowerShop. Uh, shoulder is 18 cents, which is a bit more expensive than PowerShop again. Off-peak is 16 cents, which is a bit more expensive than the off-peak PowerShop rate. And the daily supply charge is $1.04, which is just under PowerShop's $1.10. And the EV usage, like I said, is 5 cents off their cheapest off-peak rate. So off-peak being 16 cents per kilowatt hour. It's now 11 cents per kilowatt hour between the hours of midnight and 5 a.m. every day. And then the solar feed-in tariff is 8 cents per kilowatt hour, which is actually better than AGL's uh, EV plan. Of course, much better than PowerShop's 5 cents per kilowatt hour. So again, plugging the same numbers I've had for the last four power bills, the total cost comes to $1,280.28. Unfortunately, they offer a 5 cents off per kilowatt hour for their EV plan off their cheapest off-peak rate is still not uh, better than power shops 6.6 .6 cents per kilowatt hour so I think at the end of the day looking at these four plans power shop still comes out on top and I think I'll probably go with power shop at this stage when my AGL plan expires there's a couple more EV plans I want to go through and the next one is the red energy EV saver plan the deal is that you get free electricity usage for your entire house between the hours of 12 midday and 2 p.m. every Saturday and Sunday. So that's essentially four hours of free electricity every week. 
So let's take a look at that. So if you've got an 11 kilowatt charger for your Tesla Model 3 running at three phase, that's 44 kilowatt hours of electricity for your Model 3 every week. That'll give you 260 kilometers of charge every week. So if you drive less than 35 to 40 kilometers per day, then this might actually be quite good for you. For my situation, I need 20 kilowatt hours per day for both cars. So that's probably not enough for me if I want free electricity to charge my car during this time. And the last power company I want to talk about is Amber. Now, of course, Amber runs on a subscription model where you pay $15 per month. You essentially only pay the wholesale price of electricity in 30 minute price blocks, what they call settlement periods. And on the Amber app, my understanding is that you do get a notification of price spikes above $3 per kilowatt hour. Historically, Amber has been known to go above $17 per kilowatt hour. Yes, that's $17, not 17 cents, by the way. So yes, that seems quite high on first impression. However, on the Amber website, there is a guarantee that they'll never charge you any higher than the reference price for 12 months. The app does have a forecast function for upcoming price spikes, I guess, and conversely, times of cheap electricity. Of course, the plus side of wholesale pricing is that you do get a nice feed-in tariff as well when the price is up. Now, of course, this seems great paying the wholesale price of electricity and of course, even better if you've got solar and battery to offset those times where there's really high pricing, like $17 per kilowatt hour. However, for my situation, I do like to have some stability and given my vocation, I can't be checking the Amber app all the time to make sure I get the best deal. However, having said that, there is something called Smart Shift, which looks quite interesting and may actually automate some of that process. It does say coming soon, so we'll certainly keep an eye on Amber in the coming months. All right, guys, well, that is my research for uh, current electric vehicle electricity plans in New South Wales, Australia. As I said, I'm probably going to go with PowerShop at this stage. They seem to have the best deal looking at historical data for my electricity usage over the last 12 months. Uh, there's no contract for any of these specific plans, which is great. I can always move to another company whenever I see a better deal. But for now, I'm going to sign up with PowerShop once my AGL EV plan expires, particularly because I'll be installing a second Tesla charger so that both cars can charge at that beautiful 6.6 .6 cents per kilowatt hour rate during the weekday. All right, guys, hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Really appreciate that. And of course, subscribe to my channel if you've not done so already yet. And by the way, have you got a really good EV charging plan for your neck of the woods? If you do, please leave a comment below. I'd really love to hear from you. All right, guys, stay safe. And as always, happy charging.